I'm Rebecca. And I'm Hunter. And this is the, the Family, Family Showdown! Howdy folks, welcome back to my top 100 games of all time. I'm Hunter, this is Rebecca, my comrade in arms. <laughs> Today we're looking at my 60 to 51, the worst. No, the best of the worst. Oh dear. The best of the worst. All right, best of the worst. take a look, we'll do a preview, sneak preview. Okay. One new game. One new game. Just one. Seven games that dropped. Good grief. And okay. two games that went up. Uh, that, that numbers are all wrong. I have no idea. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Seven, no. Eight, nine, ten, let's ten. see. One, one new game. One went, seven that dropped. That's eight. And then two that dropped. Yeah. Two that went up. That's ten. Or whatever. I don't know. That's I can't, ten. I can't math. You can't add to ten? <laughs> Actually, let's I, move I can't on to my anything. number 60. I, okay. <laughs> it was my 35 last time. Oh, it dropped. Okay. 28 the time before that, 29 before that, 20 before that. So 20, 29, 28, Whoa. 35. Okay. All the way down to 60 because it's a horrible game now. And that is... Oh, that because such... The reason it dropped is because I got to now lug this thing around. <laughs> oh my gosh, you break our table. <laughs> Terraforming Mars. This is a ridiculous box. <laughs> This is what, the what is, this is like the of age power. This is the the age of the ridiculous sized boxes for sure. This is m still really high on my list. It's uh, twenty five. Yeah, that's about where it was for me. It was. Uh, yeah, you had it as high as twenty, I think. Yeah. You said thirty five so last time. Anyway, it's dropped a little bit because I don't know. Bloat. It's a, it's a one trick pony. It is not. Where you get? Just engine building. That's all it is. Oh my I'm just kidding. I don't know. I love terraforming Mars. Uh, Th this is so good. I think it's. I think what it's all, honestly it? suffering from being played a lot. Maybe. I, yeah. I could have played this that. one quite a bit. Quite a bit. I'm cool with playing this some more. In fact, we played it several times just since we've gotten the uh, box of Doom. Um, because it's so pretty. Yeah, so it's so, so pretty. It's got all these deluxe 3D components and like little metal cubes and all sorts of lovely, delicious things. That's a good one. Uh, it's a, it's it is a uh, it is a a popular game. Is what I'm trying to say. It's it's high up on Board Game Geek. It's high up on top 100 lists. It's high up on people's favorites. It's high up on everything. It is uh, super super popular. For good reason. It's a great little engine building game. Drafting cards. You're building those cards in your tableau. The cards interact with each other. They give you benefits and bonuses and cool things. And meanwhile, you're doing all this stuff on a board. You're building out the your terraform Mars. You're, you're, you're putting water and you're, you're putting grass and you're putting cities and all sorts of fun stuff. Even got a little bit of attacky bits or some attacky cards where you can attack other players, but that's kind of a minor part of the game. It's all about building that engine and drafting the cards and being efficient and resource management and all these cool things. Um, it's got achievements that you go for, uh, awards that you can opt into and, and get at the end of the game. It's a great little game. I love it. She loves it even more than I do. I do. She harps on how thematic the cards are. You know, you yep. can't have... I harp you can't on have, You can't you. have uh, <laughs> stuff in the oceans until you have water and you can't have... Uh, and it's got to be warm. It can't be just frozen solid. Yeah, and you can't have <laughs> animals until you got a certain temperature and a certain oxygen level, blah, 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 blah. It's fun. It's fun. It's a good one. It's a solid. Uh, this ridiculous box and the ridiculous components aren't necessary, in my opinion. A lot of people harp on how bad the original production is. I thought it was it's all right. It was that bad. It was all right. But this is crazy amazing now with all this great stuff in, in the box. Um, so there it is. Everyone, everyone knows about Terraforming Mars, right? My if not, you do now. My number 60, Terra Forming Mars. I'll let you, I'll let you move this. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to my number 59. This is one of the games I do not own. I didn't do a count. <gasps> what? I didn't do a count of games I do not own. Yeah, you have to check that. I'm curious now. Uh, there's not many, but what's curious... Intriguing, even? ...is that two of the games I do not own are in this set of ten. That is interesting. And this is one of them. This is 1830. It's got some name. 
Railways and Robber Barons, 1830. It's an 18xx game. Cool. This one uh, is so high on my list. This is kind of like the uh, granddaddy. The granddaddy. Because the most of, most, nearly all the 18xx games I enjoy are off the, this branch. They're all based on the 1830 system. So you got 18 MS and 18 mm -hmm. Chesapeake and 18... Uh, what else? Other games I've played. 39, 89. 32, uh, I don't know. All of them. <laughs> Just making stuff up. <laughs> There's a whole chain of games that are based off of the 1830 uh, system. And it's my favorite system in the eight of the ones I've played. I've only played okay. a handful okay. of them, but it's my favorite one that I've played. And I love all the games that are based off this one. So I got to give some credit to the original of all the ones and I love. You go. And that is 1830. It's an 18xx game. It's got your, your. Isn't that kind of a one trick pony? No. You're, it's got stock market. It's got root building. It's got <laughs> deliver. It's got trains. It's got all sorts of stuff going on. Sorry, sorry. I just had to one push the button. One trick pony. <laughs> One train pony. No, no, no don't even. You're, not, trick you're train? not funny. No, 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 you're not funny. If you watched last time, I had to, made a caboose joke. It was pretty good. Oh, gross. <laughs> anyway, 18xx, if you don't know, this is a super heavy game where you are uh, taking control of companies. You're building those companies out. You're building routes on, on, out on the map. You're delivering, uh, getting trains to basically deliver, to make to do routes through those things. It's not really deliver anything, but you're running routes through all those different areas. Chain. It's an efficiency puzzle. It's a stock market game. It's an economic game. It's a mean, brutal, uh, can be super aggressive, mean game. If you play that way, I tend not to play that way. And when I play with players that play that way, I usually get smacked around because I kind of kind of play friendly 18xx-ish. And that, that bites me in the butt many times when I, I'm too nice and I'm learning to be a little meaner as, as time goes by. But anyway, oh, it's, this game is not for everyone. It is long. Uh, 1830 is one of the more beefier ones. It probably okay. runs three, four hours, five hours long. I tend to, if you, spoilers, the ones that are higher up on my list tend to be the shorter ones, the more oh, okay. com compact, the ones that are two, three, two, three, four hours. Instead the, of the four, five, six hours. Four, hour five, six, like seven, range. eight hours. Um, this one's one of the easier ones to learn. 1830 system, I think, is one of the easier. It doesn't have as much going on as some of the other uh, 18xx games do. Uh, just the original. And this is probably one... Um, I wouldn't say this would be the one you start with, because I would start with the, this grouping of 18xx, but I would think you'd eventually work your way to this one, because this is kind of the, the one of the more heavy ones that I enjoy. Um, and that is... They are fun. 1830. Railways and Robber Barons. It was my 21 last time. It's dropped quite a bit just because, like I said, the shorter ones are, are pushing this down the list because it's hard to dedicate that much time right. to, to a game over and over when I can play two or three games of some of these other ones in the time it takes to play this one. Anyway, that's it. So move on to my 58. It's 28 last time. It dropped. You watched last time I discussed the Uve Feld Punitation. And it is being punitated, and that is Glass Road. Wait a second. Glass Road. This is my number 56. So we're actually we're pretty close. Yeah. Look at that. You like it three you know? three places better than me. So you love this game more than know? I do. What do you know? The Glass Road, the, this is one of the Uves that has it's kind of tricked up, has a little more going on. This one has uh, some resource management, and you have like basically a little resource board with dials on it and you're basically it's so cool. keeping track of your resources with that but it has a, a, a gimmick that if you get one of every resource of a type of resource it produces a, a specialty resource so i can't remember you get like three or four things and you produce some glass and you get three or four other things you produce some beer or something i don't know it's been a while anyway the uh <laughs> but it's got you kind of got to manipulate that because you don't want to may you may want to produce the specialty resources and maybe you don't want to do it so you got to kind of manipulate your resources to do that. Meanwhile, you're building out basically a board. You have a yeah. board area in a lot of Uve games. You're clearing areas, you're building buildings. They give you superpowers, uh, special points at the end of the game or specialty things. But the gimmick for Glass Road, all that said, is that you have these, uh, well, I don't know what they're called, specialty cards, specialist cards. I don't know what they're called. Basically, you have a, a, a deck of 15 cards. Everyone has the same 15. You're going to pick a set of cards. Specialist. A, set, a set of five cards. You're going to play those cards. Uh, you're going to pick five to play each round. But what the trick is, you want to be kind of 
try to be unique in what you do because if uh, if I play a card out to take an action and then Rebecca has that same card in her hand, she gets a lesser action from that card. So you kind of not only you want to be the maybe want to be the first to play, but you also want to be try to be unique in, in your. <laughs> so play. I don't get to play anything cool. <laughs> so so it's like it's like you got to kind of yeah. play chicken with your opponent. It's like okay, I think Rebecca's going to do X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to do A, B, and C to, to get better powers. Or maybe I have to do X, so maybe I want to be the first to play the X yeah. or whatever. It's a, it's it's kind of got a cool hand management, I guess, hand management, uh, action selection, whatever you want to call it, system in the game with that resource management, with that building out the, the buildings on your board. Um, got a lot going on, and that's one of the reasons why it's sticking around yep. on my list. Um, this, one's, this one's a fun one. Uh, I just like that, how those dials work, and you'll, you'll, you'll learn more about that here in, here in, a, in a few. This is a good one. It, it, it says on the back, at the box, it says, oh. also an excellent two-player game. And it is. <laughs> uh, this this is this has uh, been off and on at one time or another. I think our favorite Uve, I want to say, because it was all the way up at twenty two. Yeah, twenty two on yeah. at one point. Yeah, it's dropped a little bit, but I uh, still still love me some some Glass Road. It's quite good. Because you're in the Bavarian forest. And who doesn't love a Bavarian forest? <laughs> all right. All right, let's move on to the one new game. Remember, I mentioned there's one new game in the list. This is a, one of the new games. Okay. It's a tea game. Oh. It's a tea game. It's 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 it, it's it kind of a uh, makes a point of being a good game. Oh, to Ken. Don't get my joke. Point. It's got I'm a, ignoring uh, you. I am ignoring you and your point. terrible jokes now. Oh wow, this is my 46. I like it more than you. Yeah, you love this one. You like I the one with the obelisk. I did. It's fun. It's <laughs> the, the, the obelisk. I mean, knock over the obelisk. I knock the obelisk yeah. over like you. You jest. This is one of the T series <laughs> games from from Board and Dice. Um, they make all the super heavy euros. This is one of the ones uh, that I like. I like the T series because there's so much going on. This is one like many of them where you have different regions of the board. I think it's six different regions. And you're going and influencing those different regions, and they interact with each other. It's got kind of dice drafting. The dice have different. You know, there's like day and night sides of the dice, and you gotta gotta balance taking the day and night. So you got that going on. Heavy game, difficult to explain. You almost have to go region by region. This is what this region does, and this is what this region does. And as you learn the game, you're like, oh well, if I do stuff over here, it's gonna do things over at this other spot. Yeah. Um, and the, meanwhile, the obelisk is rotating day and night, and that that manipulates on what's going on and what dice you have to do and things like that. So much going on, an awesome game, but what's really cool about a lot of the T games and this one in particular, we can knock this game out in an hour. Once we learn to play and we're set up and ready to go, it takes about an hour for two players to play. Yep. And you just feel like you accomplish so much you do. in that <laughs> amount of time. Uh, it's so and good. that's why these games are, are just trucking up my list is because you get like so much meat in such a little, an hour, which for most Euro, most Euro games are 90 this minutes to This is a brain hours. melter, too. I mean, honestly, because you really have to puzzle out and try to time when you want to do what. Right. And you have to think about the long game as well as your right. short game, which is really tough when you've got stuff changing all the time. I mean, it's just, it's it's a brain burner. Yeah, because like, I, I, like, I want to do this thing over here, but in order to do that, I knew the, the I got to do something here and here But it's got to be a certain and... time of day for you to do that. Yeah. So you have to make sure you're, the timings are, I mean, woof. Yeah, it's brain oozed. Right? It's a great. I love this. I love these games. I yeah. love this. There, I don't think there's been a, a stinker in in this series in these board and dice T mm -mm. series games that at all. Love them all. This is one of my favorites. I don't know if it is my favorite. I could take a little sneak peek, but I'm not oh, going to. I think it might be not. my favorite of the T series. <laughs> Maybe. I like how you peeked back again. You couldn't resist looking. I don't know. I think it. I think <laughs> it is. I think it is my favorite one. Uh, love it. If you want to try one of these games, just pick one. They're all heavy and they're all beasts to learn. Just whatever, whatever, whatever region of the world and you know you like. Yeah, whatever becomes the most intriguing. You like yes. you like the Mayans. You like the Egyptians. You like the whatever. Just pick a pick a pick a section of the world and, and do that. Um, <sighs> love these games. They're so much fun. Takenu, Obelisk of the Sun. Dun dun dun. All right, you remember remember the way back time way back time of two games ago <laughs> yes the last road where i talked about that resource yes. management the little wheels and manipulating the resources Ooh, yes well it's big brother is two spaces higher and that Ooh. is Bora. et labora 
excellent. And, then, and, and you know Don't what? Even, you know what? Again. You know what? This little, little sign, oh my this gosh. little and sign. I love this. It actually, much. it's actually an et. It's an et. We draw it like an. It's an et for et. I, I still. That's like one of the biggest revelations of my life. You love that. Is I, the et. Wow, you like this way more than me now. This has dropped to my 85. I love it because this one is gives me play it again. Last Road is kind of like the, the the express lane version of Orette Labora. Yeah. This one's got all the meat and all the potatoes and the potatoes and the gravy and and and, and a side salad. It's got everything Some going stuffing. on. <laughs> why do you have stuffing. I don't know why not. I love turkey and stuffing. Anyway, this one this one is similar to Last road in, in such that you're building out your you're building out these little buildings. They're actually cards. You build out these cards. Uh, a tableau. They have interactions with each other. You got to put certain ones next to others, and other ones want to be over by the ocean. Some want to be behind mountains. You get interact. You get points and all sorts of stuff. And you start out with a board, and it's like uh, if you played Feast for Odin and other places, you can add extensions and get make it bigger and bigger, and add some more coastline or add some more mountains, and you get all these cards. It's insane. And meanwhile, this is all driven by this cool resource wheel, where where uh, you have all these different resources on this kind of wheel. I don't know how to explain it. But uh, each round that someone doesn't take a resource, it t it comes more and more of it. So basically it's uh, there's four maybe there's four wood available. Next round it's five and then six and then blah blah blah. Eventually then I snipe them for you. It's what? Then I snipe some from you. And then yeah and then eventually <laughs> yeah. one and goes and grabs those and then it resets it. So yep. it's like I really want wood but man, if I wait wait till my next turn I'll have two more wood. Maybe will it make it oh Rebecca took wood. Ah! And so it's got that going on. It's got all these buildings. It's great. It's got several different ways to play. It's got uh, different card sets you can add. You add the French card set and the Irish card set. And oui, oui. there is a long version of the game. There is a short oh, version right. of the game. There's about all these different ways to play. Yeah. This, this should it's, be higher on my list. I but feel this like. is I feel like this, play it again. If this isn't the heaviest Uwe game, it's got to be close to the top. It's up there with Feast for Odin. Yeah. It is, it is, a, yeah. it is a beefy, so beefy good. game. So it, it's one of his heavier ones. That's the reason why it's sticking around. Uh, on my list is that it's got a lot going on, but really that resource, I love that almost pressure luck feeling to the resources. I enjoy that. A so lot. this is the one that has one resource wheel we all share, and yes. then the other one, Glass Road, we each have Correct. our own, right? Correct. Yeah. So that's something that's slightly different right, between right. the two as well. But Glass Road is like, like snipe, I said, Expressway. Snipe. It's like an hour game. Yeah. This one is. This not one is like, like a ooh. two to three hour yeah. game. You, like I said, you could play a shorter version, but it's not as rewarding in my opinion. You, yeah. Like, you get a taste for the game, but you're not gonna get the full. You're not gonna feel like you're experiencing the whole game. But it is long for us. Even at two players, you're talking two two and a half hours. Yeah. Two two and a half hours, easy. So for much this fun, game, though. this is a beast. But it's a fun beast. Or a et labora. Let's move on to my number 55. 55, right? 55. He's it's one right. of the ones that went up. One okay. Of the, one of the few that went up. Okay. And because we got a, I got a fairly recent play of this one. Remember how much I enjoyed this game. Um, it's, it is the, the biggest Euro in the smallest box. <laughs> Okay. That is Clans oh, of Caledonia. Snap. Yes. I don't yes. know why they yes. gave such a tiny little box. This monster of a game. For this monster of a game. I mean, it is chock-a-block full of, of stuff. That's your favorite saying. Clan Chock-a-block? Yes. Coco boo What? Chock-a-block. All right. Clans of Caledonia. This is a, just a good old-fashioned Euro game. It's, it's got, some, it's got, some, it's got a map. You're going out on a map. You're building, a, building out maps. You're putting like resources and things on a map. There is some rules on how those work and how they interact with each other and things like that. But the bit, what the the thing I like about the game, what what drives it is, I like games where you have a little player board and as you produce things, you get more and more powerful at things. Basically, you produce more resources or make more money. You're putting miners out on the board to make money. You're you're sheep and things on the board. You're making more wool. You can get specialty goods. But on top of all that, you have a superpower. You have a clan power that is very unique and very powerful and kind of somewhat drives the way you play the game. Yep. Then you got contract fulfillment going on, which I love. You also have kind of a, almost an economy of mm -hmm. goods going on. Yep. Oh, so many good things I love in, in, in Euro games. In this game, the box that doesn't close this, this game. Because <laughs> it's so chock full. Um, yeah. Anyway, and you get all that in a nice, nice little package that takes about an hour for two players, which is 
awesome. Yeah, it doesn't possum. feel like it feels like it's a longer game because you're just doing so much during the turns and everything. It's pretty yeah. amazing. Love this game so much. It's I love the it's very it's very it's very economic. It's very yeah. resource management. It's got a map going on. It's not like I just produce to to wool each turn you have actually little sheep guys out on the map that you that you have areas where you're producing things yeah. love 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 clans of caledonia this one kind of i don't know if it flew under the radar ish but you just don't yeah it, either people know about it and love it or they've never heard of it that's really true my only beef with it is for some it's reason it, the box? well that too but no that's not really but is this the one too that has some weird rules about where you build like yes. the, for whatever reason, at the end reason, of the game, it, you score like groupings of things. And yeah, stuff like that. and that always it's just like. It's confusing. But it's funny. It's, I don't know it's very similar to the Gaia Project, and you love Gaia. I know. Project. I love Gaia Project, and I love this one too. But for some reason, the the way that that is scored confuses me in this game. Yeah, I don't you want, understand. You want, I think in this one, you want distinct sections of stuff. Yes, and for some reason, I have. And they connect via water weirdly. Yeah, and the, stuff the, like the, that. the water rules and stuff. Maybe that's why some people are kind of like, huh? Because it's got a quirky scoring, and it always throws me that's off. It's only one little piece of the scoring at the end. I know, but. Just like Gaia Project has those colony of things that score at the end. That's true, it's but very this similar. one. You know what? You're right. It is similar. Maybe because it's not set in space. That's why I have problems with that. Clans of Europa. But no, this Europa. is great. Clans of Europa. <laughs> That would be so cool, actually. <laughs> but no, it's this is a good game. It's a good game. It's got good components. It's got. It's just. It's fun to look at. I love this game. It's, it's really fun. We haven't played this. And in it a dropped. While. It, got, it, it got punitated last year because I hadn't played it. We haven't played it. We need to play it. I played it. Yeah, I think uh, you played it without with, me. I did. I'm pretty sure I did play this without. Play it without me. <sighs> Life goes on. <laughs> So it was my wow. 77 last time. It jumped up to 55. Nice. But it was before that. It was my 33 and 24. Clans of Caledonia. Give me a bigger box. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to my number 54. The other game I do not own, I'm waffling on buying this game. This one, this game has actually been in my cart to purchase at least a half dozen times, and I haven't purchased it. The reason being is I don't know if I would ever play this game at our house. Okay. This is a convention game that I play at conventions. Okay. Almost every time I get, every chance I get. Yeah. That is my number 54. It was 36 last time because I didn't get to play it this year. I don't think. I didn't get to play it this year. It's maybe the first year I haven't played it in several years. And that is Dune. Oh, yeah? No, that's not going to be on here. Uh, yeah. Dune. So I own that's Rex true, yeah. somewhere. Right back here. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> I've, got, I've got Rex, which is the Twilight Imperium Stuff the stories are made of re-theming of Dune, but I like Dune better. Um, but I already have Rex, so it's again. hard to justify getting Dune um, when that one is best played with the full six players. True. And how often are we going to have six players here Not to this play? Day and age. So I tend to seek it out at conventions and play it there. I enjoy it so much. It's so much fun. It's got negotiation. It's got area control. It's got attacky. It's got backstabbing. It's got mean. It's got Everything I love, I love Dune. But I don't know if I can justify owning it for those two reasons. One being I have Rex, which is basically Dune rethemed. I don't know if we'd ever play our physical copy here. Yeah, because we're not, yeah. Because yeah. getting six players that are willing to play that game in the same spot at the same time, yeah. it requires a convention. <laughs> Thusly, I do not own Dune, but I love Dune. It, it, like I said, it is, a, it is a mean game. It is a brutal game. It is backstabby. Um, there's negotiation, there's alliances, there's broken alliances, there's heartache, there's pain, there's love, there's misery. You're really selling it to me there, Hoss. <laughs> I love it. It's so, it, you're, yeah. just, you're just into the game. It's intense. You're, you're watching right. every little Perfect move everyone's you. doing. Yeah. You're like, oh, what, why is he doing that? Wait, you two are teaming up? Okay, we got to team up because they're teamed up now. And uh, everyone has very unique uh, factions. Uh, you have all the, like the Bene Gesserit and the Atreides and the Harkonnens and blah, blah, blah. All play the game very differently, and in addition to playing the game differently, they have a in, in different win condition. Basically, there's that's right. There's a yeah. universal win condition for everyone to get. Um, basically, if you control a certain number of strongholds at the yeah. same time, boom, you win. But some of them, Benny Jesuit, they win. They guess who's going to win at the end of the game. If they're right, if they guess the person and the round they win in, they win instead. That's um, hilarious. The, the, there's one, the Fremen. If no one wins by ten rounds or something, they win. Everyone has a different way, a different secondary. Uh, potentially a secondary way to win the game. So Dune is definitely not a game for everyone. You definitely have to have the mindset. 
You can't have, I mean, it is mean, it is brutal, it is, you betray your friends, your family, your, your brother and sister, there's crying, there's tears, you have to have that mindset going in. So it's hard. Really selling it. Hard. <laughs> so much fun. It's hard to get a group of six people no, that are all don't. wanting to play that kind of game yeah, at the yeah, same that's time. That's why that's it's a convention game. That's why I haven't purchased it. I really want it. I mean, I can't, I mean, it's like in my head, it's like, it's in my top 100. I have to own it, but apparently I don't. Aww. So that's my number 54. Aww. Wow, that's really Dune. Cool that's cool. Dune. Dune. Dude. All right. <laughs> Let's move on to my 53. This is one of the ones that uh, went down. Didn't go down much, though. It was my 46 last time. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, this so. is the, the lesser brother, the little brother, the baby brother to the, the, the better Midgard game. That is Reavers of Midgard. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Where did I put Reavers? I had Reavers. Reavers of Midgard. I like Reavers. Where is Reavers? Reavers. Reavers is good. So, I like the Reavers. Uh, that was my 74. Yeah. The better known game is probably Champions of Midgard, I would say. But this, one, this, this one's kind of the sequel, the spiritual mm -hmm. successor, so and so. A lot of people say that uh, Champions is, is uh, the. The hybrid, the kind of, it's got a tacky and euro -y. This one's got a tacky, but it's much more euro -y. This is much more of a Euro game than Champions is. It's got dice-driven, same way kind of Champions yep. is, but you use those dice for various actions and functions. You have uh, kind of leaders that you're recruiting to help you. You get superpowers. The board has all these different areas you can influence and go do different things. Has combat just like Champions did, but instead of just rolling dice and crossing your fingers and hoping for the best, this one has, instead of fighting, you can collect sets, do like a set collection to defeat the monster. So the monster might need three hits to kill or two blue certain symbols and a couple other symbols, and you just pay those and, and, you, and you win automatically. Which she she really enjoys that part. I think that's why this one's a little probably a higher. It is higher on mine. Yeah. For, for higher than champions, but this is cool. It's a great little Euro game with some attacky bits going yep. on in it. Uh, I love it quite a bit. Uh, the production's really good. It is. I like neat. dice. I like dice. It's so, a fun. It's really good. I like the way they reworked champions and did some different things with it because I I really like both games. But like you said, sometimes when you're just not having a good rolly kind of day it's good to just be able to, to pay that right. amount and move on with right. your life instead of just get beating your head against a wall with bad rolls so, 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 good. so the rumor is now this is completely probably unstand un un substantiated that word uh rumor is that champions is a hybrid euro attacky this one's more euro -y. there's rumors there's they're out there in the nether somewhere is the attacky midgard game that's oh, really? like heavy attack less euro Interesting. So you got this one's kind of way in on the Euro side. Champions is kind of the hybrid. And then there's a third game that's off on the side that's like more attacky. But that's just a rumor. I, I have nothing to, to back that up other than I've heard it in whispers. Oh, in whispers. and you're spreading the rumors. Look at I am you. spreading the rumor. Rumor monger. But I love, I love Reavers of Midgard. Uh, I just like it. it. It reminds me a lot of the uh, West Kingdom games and how it yeah, plays. It's yeah, very, I can see that. It, it has a very West Kingdom y feel. Or the other way around. I don't know which one came first, chicken or the egg. Maybe the West Kingdom. These did. I think the West Kingdom games maybe feel like this game. However yeah. you want to look at it. But I love it. I love the. I love. I love Euro games that have dice. I know it's kind of a misnomer, almost to say Euro game and dice because Euro games are supposed to be low random. But yeah, I love it. I love this game. Uh, there's so many choices, so many paths to victory. You got set collection and tacking and all sorts of fun stuff going on. And Reavers of Midgard. Woot, woot. That's a good one. All right. Solid. Let's move on to a tea game, but it's not a tea game. It starts with tea. It kind of feels like a tea game, but it's not in the tea game series. This one dropped just a hair, but it's hanging out in the same neighborhood. It was 68 way back in 17, 71, 50, 45, and now 52. This is a game where you take sticks and glass and do magic tricks. Oh. And that is Tricarion. <laughs> Legends of Illusion. Illusion. Trick, carry on. <laughs> Trick, carry on. Oh, it's Trixie. He has two covers. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, what happened? I love what this happened? game. This is a fun game. This is a this is a brutal game. That's why it reminds me. I was, I was joking about the T series game, but it feels like that. In terms, it is. It's really. It's heavy. a heavy game. Yep. There's a lot going on. No, There's cool. a lot of strong choices. It's got resource management. It's got these uh, cards you're manipulating. It's got kind of almost a worker placement vibe to it. You're going, you're getting all these stuff together, performing these tricks. You're putting on these performances. It's almost got kind of almost an area of control in the theater in terms of when, yeah. when you get to perform and how many people you have helping you perform and things like that. So much going on in this game. I love it. She always harps on the fact that it's the resources make no sense. Like you're doing, <laughs> pull a rabbit out of the hat and you need like a glass and a rock to do a <laughs> rabbit trick. What? It just, but no, it's, I, I, I tease about that. But the game itself is really, really solid. This is a tough one it's to just, teach. And this one doesn't yeah. get to the table very often for that reason. Because it is. It's, trick, it's but, tricksy. But what's funny, it's, it's in, in like the T series of games, I almost throw this in with it because it gives the same feel. It's a lot to teach. It's lots of choices, lots of depth, but they it happens so it's only like an hour for two players. It's about an hour game. Yeah. So you're doing all this stuff and accomplishing all these things in such a short amount of time, and that's where the, 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 these types of games are the ones that are staying on my list and yeah. going up my list. Yep. The ones where you just pack so much punch in, in such a, a small a small amount of time um, compared to other designers games. <laughs> wow shots fired shots fired. carry on i love it it's a good one i got i happened upon this at a uh, at a, a con flea market thing i got it for a song of the dance this is the kickstarter legend box exclusive weirdness and it's got lots of cool bits and expansions and stuff in it love it love to carry on i wish i get, could get more times to play it but it's just it's one of those games where you look at the it's, rules it's and you go, you go duty, oh yeah. it's, so much and, yeah. and, and, and so much to learn and and, and it's and it's over before you know it in a good way but uh love yeah it. we need to play it more often so you don't have to redo the rules as often as what it, it's yeah. one of those games it just helps it's so a good much. one it's a it's a fun one it's it's a heavy it's a it's a bit of a bear to to teach but it seems like once you learn know what you're doing it's it's pretty straightforward yep. like a lot a lot of the, T game. So I'm, I'm throwing T to carry on. Even though it's not board and dice, it's mind clash games. Um, we're going we're gonna, to, it's an honorary T game. Honorary T. Honorary T game. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. That is to carry on. Here, now move on to one that went up. Okay. One of the two that went up. Okay. Remember okay. when I was talking about Reavers and I said it felt like a West Kingdom game. Oh dear. Well, this game feels like Reavers. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, it doesn't feel like anything like Reavers. But, it is. Oh, pick it up the wrong oh, 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 oh. It is Architects. You say it like that. Anyway. I, I may be, uh, may be mm -hmm. talking about someone's pronunciation. Yes, I know. Architects of the West Kingdom. <laughs> yeah. It's the original. It's the OG West Kingdom game. It is. It's not my favorite West Kingdom I was going to say, it's not my favorite either. Is it? Is it my mm -hmm. favorite West Kingdom? Mm -hmm. This one may be my least favorite of those, mm -hmm. actually. Which is funny because I like them all a lot. But, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, interesting. Huh. But, uh, huh. That's interesting. I'm blind here. What the heck is it? Oh, oh you're looking for your other. Kids. It is my least favorite of the West Kingdom. Wow. Hint, hint. Um, so, uh, Architects, I love all the West Kingdom games. They're all obviously in my top 100. If this is my least favorite one. Uh, I just love how they work, how there's lots of going on. Um, again, it's a common theme throughout most, almost all my my top games is that I like when there's lots of things going on. This one has tons of worker placement spots that you can do. It has it's cool because a lot of worker placement games you get like one worker or two workers to start, and you're like just like I'll go get a rock or I'll go do this. I'll go get a rock. And, and then eventually you may get three or four workers. This one you start with like 20 workers or some insanity, like 12, 15 workers. And you just sure got this pile of workers. That you're going and you're going off different spots and what's cool is as you go to a spot more and more that that, that spot becomes juicier for you right so i go to this spot and i'll get a silver and then i put the second worker there and now i get two silver, two silver. and three and then four and then five except but <laughs> eventually rebecca's gonna go uh, uh, uh she can take my workers and throw them in jail right yeah. she, she actually she captures them and takes them to her, her board and so i lose those workers and but there's a there's it's beneficial for her to eventually throw them in jail and i can get them back later on by taking an action in jail. so it's kind of like almost a pressure luck is like where, at what point is it going to get so juicy that she's going to end up getting my like, workers? oh no you can't be getting all these resources at once Smack. and you're getting your <laughs> you're going to black market and getting cool stuff it's all the different worker placement spots you're it's just so so cool so many so many things going on in this game but it's that 
pile of workers. You just don't see that in games where you just get this Usually pile of workers more, right? that you yeah. get to, to, to play yeah. with. Um, it's fun. Uh, all the West Kingdom games are amazing. They're all, spoilers, fairly close on my list. Um, so they're all kind of in the same general ballpark with each other. Some I like better than others. Yeah. Um, but they're all moving up my list. I think. But this one definitely, I don't know if the other one's moving up, but this one definitely is moving up my list because we played this one again recently and I remember how much I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's like we forget how much fun it is to go and try to sneak getting a whole bunch of goods before somebody throws you in jail and it's fun to throw people in jail. And, and we played it with the, 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 we basically we played all the West Kingdom games recently because we got the... Uh, oh, the Tome Saga? Tommy Saga. Yeah, we got the Tommy Saga expansion that lets you basically changes the west kingdom games oh into a campaign God. basically you play you play each of the west kingdom games the and game. there's kind of a, a point system on who does how you how well you do in each of the uh, other games to give you a final score over all three um in the tomi saga uh, game it's one word tome saga no tommy saga oh my god all right but anyway what uh, architects awesome game Fun, tons of workers, tons of great choices. Throw people in jail. Black market, greatness. And that's it, folks. That is it for this time around. My 60 to 51, the best of the worst. That's pretty good list. Pretty let's move on. Good. Next time, let's do a sneak peek. I always sneak do a sneak peek. peek. Exactly. Sneak peek. Next time, it's the worst of the best. My 50 <laughs> to 41. Hooey. Some new games. We got three new games coming in okay. to this section of the list. Good. Three new games. Let's take a sneak peek. Let's see. Got some dropsies. Got some upsies. Some are going up. Some are going down by halves and halves. Anything the same? That's very rare. Pretty close to the same within Ooh. within a point. Ooh. Looks good. It's got some good games. Probably going to be heavy games. But that's just the way I roll. Roll. Bye! Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Click subscribe to join our wonderful viewer community. Want to be notified when we upload a new video or go live? Click on the little bell below.